What is up, you beautiful people? Welcome back to another episode of the Half Marathon Prep. We are six weeks out, holy moly. Mileage is getting up there, as we talked about. Actually, we talked about on the podcast. I haven't filled you guys in yet, but after our last episode and we filmed the running, I had a little bit of a tweak in my ankle and I ended up having to take about two and a half weeks off of running. This week, I've gotten back into running and I feel freaking amazing. You know what fixed it? I got back to my PT exercises, shocker. I made a shoe change as well as getting it rest and I felt really good this week and was able to get my mileage up. I have another run today. I am so excited to be back to running. It feels so good. Um, so running is going well as of this week. And then in today's episode, we're going to have a back session. Now, this particular back session, we've gone through in the series, but there are going to be some volume allocation changes. So the exercises themselves are going to look very familiar to you all, but we're going to have some higher repetition allotments as well as greater amount of sets. And I'm excited to dig in, let's get after it. Our first exercise is going to be the thoracic lat pull around. Last episode that we had this in, it was three sets of six, I believe, and now we have four sets of six to eight repetitions. So we're having a repetition window and a total amount of sets of four with an RPE goal of eight to nine within the first three sets. And then we're gonna take the final set to failure. Oh no. Whoops. <laughs> My verse good. situated today. crazy because what three days ago had the garage door open it was beautiful outside and then two days before that we had snow and then last night we had possible tornadoes power outages our power went out at least four times last night we utilize a thing called control four and a lot of our houses ran on this system the crappy part of control four when the power goes out and then the power turns back on the entire system kicks back on so all the lights uh, in our house are connected to the system every time that the power would go off and come back on at two o'clock in the morning at four o'clock in the morning all the lights in the house would turn on <laughs> it was something where we'd be asleep but then all the lights would kick on and we'd be awake and i'd have to go back through and turn everything off and it's a fun experience last night i had tons of sleep as you can imagine but it's funny because sometimes with training sessions after a crappy night of sleep sometimes it's not good training and then sometimes i surprise myself and have a great session a little slap happy today but overall, halfway decent so far. There we go. Mm. Mm. 
First three sets are down. I've overshot my RP a little bit. And these are, this is one of those exercises where it's easy to overshoot because it is so lengthened biased. Because of how I'm setting up my body, it's not going to be a full range of motion for my lat. Like I'm having a greater prioritization of that lengthened position. And so with only having 50 to maybe 75% of the range of motion for my lat to work through, it's easy for me to push that boundary and get into partials because the repetition itself is more of a partial. And so something to be mindful of, I'm not being perfect here. If I was coaching myself in this scenario, I'd probably say, hey, probably need to back off the load, but guess what? I'm having fun today and I'm loving this. So I'm gonna keep pushing the humble up a little bit. I may tomorrow be like, hey, I could have pulled back, but I think there's a time of give and take of having more fun and enjoying yourself and pushing the boundaries a little bit, and that's what we're doing today. I think we stay. First exercise is done and dusted. And now we're moving to a single arm vertical pull down. So this is going to be targeting more of the iliac lat, whereas in the last exercise, we were having more of a bias towards the thoracic portion or the upper division of the lat itself. And so we're gonna have a similar rep and set scheme here is that we'll have four sets of six to eight repetitions with titrating up the RPE or a goal more so of seven to nine or eight to nine within our RPE of the first three sets. And then we'll be taking the last set to failure. Oh. Doom. 
I think I'm gonna have to retire this shirt. This shirt, this is like the, the OG Lululemon. They were my favorite shirts. Then the woke mob came at them and said there was a, a portion of the material that was in the shirt that caused cancer and everyone was up in arms. And then Lulu decided, you know what? We're gonna respond to that woke mob and we're gonna say no more of my best selling, best t-shirt that we've always had. We're gonna redo the shirt and then tell everyone it's the exact same. And that shirt is nothing like this shirt. I have bought so many of this, the same shirt and they do not have the same fit, stretched out almost immediately as soon as you start doing physical activity, yoga, training, whatever the case may be, Lulu has failed me. I have held onto this shirt. This shirt has gone through so many hot yoga sessions and so many sessions in here that there's just a permanent slight stench that I just have to tolerate when wearing this shirt, but it's getting to the point now that it's not tolerable. <laughs> I wish that someone would just take the material, make the shirt again on a different brand. I would buy every single color, but, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 Uh, so the SEC tournament's going on right now, and UK is the number two seed for those that do not know. Sue graduated from UK. I am a UK fan through marriage, and so her entire family is massive UK fans. And so I will be going over to Sue's mom's house tonight to watch as they take on their first game in the SEC tournament against Texas A&M. Um, I would love for them to win out here because it's going to improve their seed that they will be for the tournament. And UK is playing the best basketball that they've played mm. all year right now. And so it's the best possible time for them to mm. be playing good basketball because early in the year they were not playing good mm. basketball. And it was something where I was like, this team was touted to be one of the best in a while and it's not looking too promising. But as of the last couple of weeks, they've been playing their best ball. So um, I am excited for March Madness to be underway. My God, does this shirt stink. Jeez. Okay. Movement number three is going to be it's a new one from N1 Education. I've talked to you guys about this. Adam Miller is my coach, and he is a big part of the research that they're doing there. One of the things that they have been working on is improving the rear delt, or just really posterior chain training. Uh, they have a big qualm with the lengthened bias work and what has been published in literature thus far. And so they're digging a little bit deeper and trying some different things out. This movement here is one of those things. We're going to have a little bit of a different overall setup here to bias the rear delt in more of a lengthened position. Do not take my execution as the creme de la creme this is the standard. I'm working on this movement as well. And so uh, I've gotten feedback from Adam a couple of times and we're progressing towards finding that perfect positioning for me and having everything aligned. 
One interesting thing that they found from their research, and I would again echo that reaching out to Kasim, uh, Adam, Cody, the guys that are there in the trenches doing the research, you should ask them more directly. But they're finding that a, uh, a hand positioning more like this as I'm pulling away from my body and not having more of a neutral hand placement has had more rear delt activation. The reason for that, I'm not 100% sure at the moment. I need to ask Adam myself, but that's what we're trying with the execution here with this particular movement. And I'll show you guys the setup. So having the D handle here, the cable is going to be coming from a, a higher positioning, going to be facing away with our staggered stance, and we're gonna be having more of our bicep towards our mouth. This is, this is again, my understanding. As we are doing the fly, we're going to allow for the shoulder to travel around. So we're protracting into this position to better lengthen the rear delt. Big Q here is staying stable through the elbow and not getting into this flex state and trying to do like this tricep extension, right? We wanna avoid this, but we wanna allow for that shoulder to travel and then we're going to stay stiff through that elbow and then drive the hand out. It's not gonna be a full range because you know, it's another one of those movements where we're biasing a particular portion of the range of motion to get more of an intention to that muscle at that particular length. So this is the positioning here, and then we're just driving out, having a slight pause in the more prioritized spot, and then driving the hand out. And we have three sets of eight to 10 repetitions here. And that exercise is going to be paired with a facing away dual cable curl for the same repetitions and sets. It does feel good. Um, I think that rear delts are something I have not had the best development with. I feel like my medial delt has probably had the best growth of if I was to look at anterior, medial, and rear delt for me personally. So rear delt is a priority for me. Um, and this is one of those movements that over the last handful of weeks I've had some good success with and look forward to seeing the progress that I do make uh, within this particular movement. Roll back. My leg feels more naked that I have one tattoo instead of no tattoos. And now I'm like, 
every time I see my leg, I want to finish my leg. Whereas when I had, this was my first tattoo and I had this by itself for a while and I didn't have any issue with it. I thought it looked great by itself. And I think this looks great by itself. I have this really strong itch. I don't even know what else I inherently want to finish my leg, but I just feel this like dire need <laughs> to just go back and get my leg completely finished. Um, it's so funny. I, I really don't know why it's happening, but every day when I see my leg, I'm like, we gotta finish it. It's so easy to try and turn this into a tricep. It's like, it's so easy just to try and like get a little bit of extra oomph by just bending a little bit at the elbow. And I'm sure when I go back to the, to the training footage, I'll be like, oh, I did cheat a little bit here and there, but it's better, it's better than my first rodeo. I think that's, this is my, either my third or fourth session with that movement. And I have sent a video to Adam every single week to review it. Even if I feel like it was on point and he doesn't need to look at it again, there's still just a little bit that I want to make sure is crystal clear. Because also within my training, I'm taking what I'm learning here and once I feel confident, I feel like I have mastered the movement, I'm taking it and applying it to my clients as well. And I do not want to be in a position where I'm teaching it to my client and something doesn't feel right and I don't have the answer for it. And so I'm very extensive with my own coaching and my experience prior to implementing it with my personal clients as well. Grinder. <laughs> Hit failure on that one, I think. Um, we have two exercises left. I'm a dumb dumb, and I did not uh, time things out well. I have a barber appointment here in like 35 minutes that are, my barber's about 30 minutes away. So I need to go get some food in me. And the two other exercises that if you guys are using this session um, is a horizontal rear delt row, and then I have a cable hammer uh, bicep curl. So those two movements are what is left. When I get back from the barber, and I do this from time to time, if you have a home gym, you can do this as well, is that if I get crunched on time, I'll come back out here. I've got three sets of both of those exercises. I'll come back out here and get that volume in later. Is it the best situation? No. The best situation is to get it all done at one time. Does it still, you know, is my muscle like, well, since you didn't do it all at the same time, it doesn't apply? No. It's like, it still works, but Best case scenario, do it all at once. And if that's not the case, you can split it up and still get it done. That being said, that concludes today's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed the back session. If you guys have any questions or things that you'd like to see in the next episode, let us know in the comments. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel and we'll see you in the next one.